and good afternoon on this rainy Houston day. Thank you so much for joining us for another special Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month workshop. My name is Celeste and I'm a librarian here at the Harris County Public Library System. Today we're partnering with Young Audiences of Houston again for a super fun Lay's Follow Along Make at Home project. Lays are colorful garlands that are made with beautiful flowers and greenery and used on special occasions. Sarah Gish, a teaching artist at Young Audiences, is here today to teach us how to make them with simple supplies that you may already have at home. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. It's going to yeah. be really fun. And you know, Thank I just you. checked the weather in, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Lays, but I just checked the weather um, in the island uh, nations right now, and it's in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it's we'll really pretend nice. we're there today. While I know. I was just thinking ladies. it'd be wonderful to be there right now. So, <laughs> Well, we're also excited to get started learning about this. So we'll go ahead and let you take it away. How about okay. that? Thank you. Well, I am really excited to be here and to see everybody and those of you who are joining along live and those of you who are watching this um, later on. So what I'm doing is I am, as um, Christine said, I am making uh, lays, it's Christine Celeste, I'm making lays and um, actually lays were a tradition that were brought over from um, the Polynesians. They brought them to the Hawaiian islands in the 400s and 400, about so that's a long long time ago fifth century a.d um, so they've been around a long time and lays are as she said um, colorful flower arrangements they can also be made of any kind of interesting pattern um, and they're an adornment around the neck and so we're gonna i'm gonna show you three different lays that you can make and um, lay day is a big event in hawaii on may 1st so um, i really want you to Think about channeling yourself to the islands and um, let's get going. The first thing I want to do, though, which is what I do with all my art students, is to get us centered and to connect to our hearts. So if you guys who are watching um, live or later on, if you'll just close your eyes and get quiet for a moment, I'm going to ring my Tibetan singing bowl. And if you'll just take a deep breath in and hold it and let it out. Deep breath in and let it out. And one more time, deep breath in and let it out. And when we make art, art is actually from the heart and so um, you can see here the connection between art and heart. And I like to mention that because all of our art comes from our heart. And so whatever you make today, whatever you make with art anytime is from your heart and it's okay. So I just want you guys to get creative. Um, so, and, and make it however you want, make it your own way. So the first lay that I'm going to show you guys is this paper flower lay. Um, and before we get started, I want to make sure you have supplies. So the supplies that um, I said for you to have are straws, um, pipe cleaner, and actually you just need one of those or two of those, tissue paper, um, yarn, construction paper, and then there's some other surprise supplies. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make the flower, um, paper flower, uh, lay. And so what you need to do is get um, a long bit of yarn because that's going to basically be your um, string for the, the lay. And as you're making these lays, they were, they were worn and given as gifts to honor friends, people we love, um, dignitaries, and also even sometimes for people who were being laid to rest who had passed away. Um, so as you're making them, you might want to think about each flower that you have uh, representing either maybe a friend or a family member or a characteristic of the person you're going to give it to. You know, for example, um, if I was giving this to my friend, I would say, you know, trustworthy, kind, um, and think about that kind of thing as you do each lay. 
you can actually actually make this for your family as well and have each flower represent a different family member. So that would be really fun. Okay, so you're gonna take the yarn and you can use whatever color yarn you want. You can also use string if you don't have yarn and you'll have that ready to make your um, lay. And then what we're gonna do is have like a little, um, a little flower factory. So you take your, your construction paper and you're gonna to wanna to cut it into little um, rectangular or square pieces. Um, either one works. I'm gonna kind of do square. Uh, and you know, here is your chance to choose whatever color you want. I've got lots of um, different colors of construction paper. If you don't have construction paper, you can just use white paper. That'll work just fine. So, um, and it doesn't need to be cardstock. In fact, it's better not to be cardstock. So I am just cutting up here some construction paper. And then what I'm gonna do is take each piece one at a time, fold it, and then I'm going to just cut it along here and I'm gonna have three little petals that I'm gonna create. So one on the right, I'm gonna show this to you so you can see it. One in the middle and one on the left. And you wanna make sure that you don't cut the folded piece away completely. And so this is what you're gonna have when you unfold it. Um, we're going to make a few of these. You can make them with me just um, while you're doing this. You fold the paper in half and the same thing with the folded piece on the bottom. We're going to make some flowers here and you do a petal on your right, a petal in the middle to make sure you guys can see this and then a petal on the left. Now, the other thing you can do if you want, if you prefer, you can also have a, um, you know, the form here already and you can trace it. Um, let me show you this. Um, you can trace it if you want and have each flower be exactly the same. I kind of like to make flowers the way we make, you know, nature where they're imperfect and not exactly the same, but it's up to you. Um, so I'm going to do a few more, uh, and you can do different colors. You can do, um, all the same color if you want. And again, I am cutting some more of these. I'm going to do six of these just to kind of get it started and show you. Um, and you know, this is fun to just have with your kids a time to, you know, just get them to be creative. How do they want to cut their, their, uh, flowers? What colors do they want? You can also decorate your flowers with markers if you want to do that. So get as creative as you want. And again, just a reminder, my paper is here. The fold is on the bottom, okay? And cutting out petals. And what I recommend is three petals. And that makes a real fun flower, kind of like Matisse, if you know who that artist is. Um, and we're going to bring the Polynesian Islands to Houston, Texas. Okay, um, I'm going to grab just a few more just to have some more color um, choices. I'm actually just using three colors. So, and just take your time. You know, I, I like to make art um, with music in the background, you know, just kind of some mellow music. So you could actually really get the um, Asian American Pacific Islander heritage feeling by playing some music from New Zealand or Hawaii or that kind of thing. Um, the lays are also connected to um, hulu, skirt, hulu skirts, if you think about that, um, that are worn in Hawaii. So there's a lot of beautiful nature out there and that is why um, part of why these um, lays became so popular because people wanted to adorn themselves with flowers. So it's a great way to um, connect with nature as well, which I absolutely love to do. Um, okay, so I have, um, I believe, six flowers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so here are my flowers. 
And what I'm going to do is I want you to look at this because this is what we're making. And we'll have a knot um, at the very end. And then we're going to have little straws and the flowers in between the straws. So if you think of the straws as like beads on a necklace, that's kind of what keeps them separated. Um, and kids, you might want the kids that are watching might want to think about what would happen if we didn't have the straws here? You could think about that for a moment, kind of the physical property of this necklace. But if you didn't have the straw, uh, what would happen? And I will tell you, the flowers would all bump together. So you want to have them separated so it'll make more of a um, artistic lay. Um, okay, so we're going to take that big piece of yarn that you cut and um, tie a knot. Now, what I like to do is have a knot that's tied three times. So you loop it in three times. You don't tighten it until you get the third time in there, okay? So hopefully you saw that I was doing that one, two, three, because that makes kind of a big fat um, knot, which is good. Okay, so we're gonna start with, I have, so you have your straws and um, you cut them up into little pieces. This is about an inch. You can actually do it um, a little bit shorter if you wish, but I'm gonna put it at that size because it gives it a nice space in between the flowers. Okay, so I'm putting my yarn through the first straw. And sometimes if it's a little bit slow, like you can see it's coming out here, um, but if it doesn't, you can blow it actually just to help it move out. So, um, okay, so here is our first, whoops, um, there we go. Actually, what I think we're gonna do is, cause that just fell right off. So we're gonna put the um, first thing will be the flower. Okay, so what you do is you take your pipe cleaner and you poke a hole, not a huge hole with your flower. Um, cause if you get it much bigger, it will fall out. So then what you're going to do, you've poked a hole with the pipe cleaner and now you're going to poke the yarn with the pipe cleaner again through that hole. And you can see there's just a little bit, hopefully you can see that just a little bit of yarn peeking out. And so we're going to have that go through the hole here. Um, okay. Whoops. Hang on. Okay. And that one, we're gonna use a different one with a little bit bigger hole. Okay, here we go. Art is always an adventure. You never know what's gonna happen um, when you make it. Okay, so let me just get this yarn. It went kind of crazy on me. Okay, so now we're gonna do this again where we poke the yarn in with the pipe cleaner. Okay, so you have to be kind of careful and just push it in. Okay, and now that is working beautifully. So we've got our um, yarn going into the hole there. Okay, and now it will stay on. And um, you know what? I think I may need to make a new, <laughs> use a different piece of yarn. We're gonna have it cooperate a little bit better. Okay. So we're going to do that again, and we're going to tie the knot again, remember, three times. We do one, two, and three. Okay, so now we're going to get the flower poked the hole in there with the pipe cleaner and push that yarn on through. We can get that in there. Come on, little hole. Okay. Um, there we go. Now we've got it going and okay, perfect. And that is our very first uh, flower for the um, lay. Now, sometimes you might want to if the yarn starts getting a little frayed, you can, um, you know, lick it, give it a little bit of water so it will, um, you know, 
it will stay together better. And here we go. So now we have our next piece and um, we're gonna tie a knot here. And again, three times is the magic number. So one, okay, two, I'm gonna make sure it didn't get all tangled up and everything else. We're gonna move this to, and one more loop around, which will make it three. And then you've got a big fat knot, which is what you want to keep the flower and the, uh, the straw on there. Okay, so there's the second, the first straw, and now we're going to do this again, where we poke the flower in the center with the pipe cleaner that you have. So here we go. Just kind of make it a little bit of a hole there. Um, if, if you have a hole puncher, that actually is going to be too big. So that's why I like using, it's going to make a hole that's too big. So that's why I like using the... Um, the pipe cleaner because that just helps push it on through. So here we go. And we have the yarn going through here. There we go. And just pull it through. Make sure it cooperates. If you need to, if it's not cooperating, you can just cut it like that and then push it through again with pipe cleaner. Okay, there we go. All right, and so now we have the next flower on our lay coming right along. Again, you want to have a knot after each um, piece that gets put on the lay. So we're going to put this through three times as well. So one, two, and this is great for, you know, your fine motor skills for kids. And if your kids are young, um, you may need to do this for them, but they can be helpers by counting for you. So that's, this is the third time through. Okay, and just be careful, because just like whenever you sew something, things can get tangled. Um, but you can make yourself a big fat knot just like that, okay? Fat knots are happy knots. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get my next, and you can see it's a little bit frayed, so I want to, I'm gonna lick it a little bit, and I may need to cut it just a little bit just to make sure it's gonna work well. Um, so now we're gonna put it through. There's a knot at the end here, so you wanna make sure that there's a knot, and then we're putting the next, um, yarn and straw together. And again, this is sort of like beads um, and it just really makes a beautiful lay. So um, now we're gonna get our, and you can add, you know, you see that I have different colors of flowers. I have different colors of straws right there. Um, so, and what I'm gonna do before I add the flower is have a knot. Cause again, there's a knot in between each piece on this lay. So there we go. One, and again, count to three. We have two, and then one more is three. Okay. There's a big fat knot. Okay. Now, um, this is the last one I'll show you because you, I'm sure you get the idea, but again, poke the pipe cleaner in the middle, kind of work it there a little bit just so it has um, a bit of a hole and then make sure that your yarn is uh, good to go and you can poke the yarn in. You're, you're taking the flower, poking the yarn in with the pipe cleaner. It kind of helps it go in and gets it through the flower, the center of the flower and you pull that through, make a knot, and there you go. And when you make this delay this way, I really recommend, well, let me just finish this to show you, remind you how many 
times do you go through? See if you remember, it's one, two, and one more. It's three times through. Okay, so um, this is a very relaxing activity to do with a family. I mean, you can have one person, you know, cutting all the flowers. Um, you could have somebody else making the little straw um, pieces, you know, however you want to do it. Um, it could be a group activity. It could be a solo activity. Um, but there you go. So that is the flower lays. And what you end up with is a lay like this. And it's really, it's fun to wear. It's, it's big. It's really 3D. So that's cool. I always like a lot of um, action, a lot of movement. Okay. So now the next, um, I'm going to move the construction paper. So the next one that you're going to make is the tissue paper lay. And that's, um, this one you can get very creative with. Here is some tissue paper and you can see how it looks um, really colorful and fun, um, very island-ish. Um, so I'm going to move my straws and pipe cleaners and all of that. Um, okay, so for this one, you're going to make uh, tissue paper flowers. And I don't know if you have not made those, they're super fun to make, um, especially because you can get creative with them. So as you can see here, you know, I've got a white tissue paper flower. I've got a blue one, you know, pink. And this, this one's fun. It's a fun thing to do is to make it multicolored. Um, so whatever colors you want to use, you know, I've got a lot of colors for my, um, for my tissue here. And um, so you can use whatever colors you want. I'm going to start with the blue one. And what you do is you have your tissue paper cut up. So I've got it all cut up already. And you pile it, you know, on top of each other. And you're going to do what I call um, accordion. So you're going to fold it back and forth. And I don't know if you can see that well enough, but I'm folding it back and forth. And um, I'm actually going to start over again because I want to make it kind of want to make them all together because what's going to happen is these are going to become the leaves as you fold it, the little um, pieces that you're folding. So you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So what you're going to end up with is um, the, like an accordion. And so when you open up the accordion, that's what makes the flower. So you're going to take your yarn and you are going to uh, tie the flower together. So you have your, your pieces of your accordion tissue paper. You tie that all together. Put the, um, you're going to tie it on the side that has mostly the folded pieces here. So you will tie that and I recommend for this flower, just one knot, okay? And, uh, but you do, you're gonna tie it like that and then tie it with a knot to kind of seal it off. Okie dokie. And then what you're gonna do is you are going to open this up and create your flower. And it's really fun to see it go from from this to a flower. And so what you're gonna do is start, you fold these pieces and you can see that these are the pieces that were on the outside because they're um, not folded, they're cut together. And so you're gonna bring each little layer, um, you're gonna tear those kind of apart, you're gonna tear them away from um, the other pieces of paper. And you really just do this, you know, as much as you want, as little as you want. It depends on what shape you want the flower to have, but you can just keep pulling away. Um, it's kind of, as I said, it's kind of magical because it's it's been this flat um, tissue paper, but as you pull it away um, and make this little flower, it becomes full, like you've added water to it almost. So, um, 
you just keep pulling that. And also, if you want, you can cut the flower, you know, you can round it a little bit. I'll show you some of that. Um, I'll show you a few different things that we can do here. Um, but anyway, so there is your first flower. You want to make sure you don't have um, the central part showing um, where you tied your yarn. So just keep pulling on that till it's covered. And this is your very first flower. It looks kind of like a carnation. Okay, so now we can take um, I'm going to take some several different colors and put those together and uh, make a multicolored layered flower. Um, and it depends on, you know, whatever size. This one actually is going to be a little bit too small. So I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger. But I, I kind of say about um, this length, you know, about six inches or so is a good size. Um, and as you're making flowers, that's a good thing. Again, if you have different age kids, you can have one kid um, measuring, you can have another child cutting. Um, but I do recommend um, in either of these two lays that you have kind of a flower um, factory going first before you start putting them all together, which is what you can do with the other one as well. So I'm just cutting here. I'm kind of cutting and the cutting doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, I've got some already cut, but um, I wanted to make multicolored. So we're going to have um, orange, yellow. I'm going to add some red. I'm going to put the green in first. So it will have more of a contrast. And again, you can see that it's not perfect. It almost makes it you know, it's not perfectly the shape, but it almost makes it more fun that way because then your flower, just like flowers in real life, will have different sizes of the petals and that kind of thing. So I'm added green now and I'm going to go back and add, uh, I think, some red and then some blue uh, and some white. But it's just... And like I said, you can just have, you know, whatever colors of tissue that you want, or you can have, um, you know, you can just have one color. It does not matter, whatever, however colorful. The thing about lace that is uh, interesting to note is that they do um, often have a pattern. I don't know if you noticed this, but in this lay, I had two white, one blue, two white, one blue. So you can kind of see that um, as you look at it there, that's a better view of it. So you can um, also come up with a pattern that makes it interesting. And um, so I'm gonna continue to cut another sheet of tissue paper. I'm gonna add white. We're just gonna really be very colorful with this flower. And uh, it'll be fun to see how it turns out. Okay. And I don't know. We have kind of a stack there. I think I am going to add more of a bright blue to top it all off. So the sky's the limit as far as color and size. You can also, if you want, do a lot bigger flowers. Um, you can do smaller flowers. But again, these are sheets of paper that are just individually cut. There's no folds in these right now. I'm laying them one on top of the other. Um, this one had a little fold, so I'm going to unfold it and, uh, you know, just continue laying um, one on top of the other. Okay, so this again is your uh, petal pile, we'll call it, and I'm going to kind of cut it a little bit to make it even. Okay, so now we're going to do the accordion again, where you go, you start out and you fold it. I'm going to try to do this this way so you can see it. And then you're going to go back that way, go forwards, backwards, forwards, and backwards. Okay. And you can see it's the accordion, okay? And the accordion, just to kind of get your mind um, to understand this, the accordion is the back of the flower. And then the front will be the separate pieces of paper that we pull out. 
So again, we're going to grab a yarn, your handy dandy yarn. Um, and since the back of the accordion is where it's folded right here, as you can see, um, I am going to put my yarn there. I'm going to tie it in the back. Uh, I'm going to do a few of these and then I'll show you how to bring them all together for your leg. So I tied it and now I'm going to do that with a knot. Okay. And you want to have um, around this size of a string, you know, because what you're going to do is you're going to tie them together and they will be one long chain of beautiful um, tissue paper flowers that you have made. So we've got this tied and again with tissue paper flowers you kind of fold it in and you just start undoing the pieces of paper that are there together one by one and you can do um, each side one by one. It can get a little bit tight if it's a smaller piece of paper um, so or smaller pieces of paper that you're using so you just use whatever size you want and um, sometimes you know if there's a lot of paper too it can be difficult but this one should be really interesting because it's got a lot of different colors here and so I'm just going to gently pull each layer apart and uh, it makes a really interesting design that you can use for your lay. And so there's there's two parts to each lay. There's the part where you make what goes on it and then there's the second part which is where you put the lay all together. So um, you might want to think about how you're going to schedule that and how you're going to work that. Um, okay, and so you can see here there is it's starting to get colorful and really nice. Um, and then I'm pulling that's on one side, I'm pulling apart um, the papers on the other side, and it can be a little bit tight, and that's okay. You know, you just you can manipulate the paper as much as you want. So, um but it's really fun to make these um, tissue paper flowers because you can actually use them um, just by themselves uh, for all kinds of things. You can put them on presents. Um, you can make them, you know, if you have longer yarn, you can make it like a corsage there. Um, but anyway, so this is the second flower and you can see it's uh, got a lot of different colors. So we've got this, blue one that we made, just one color. We have the multicolored. And now I'm going to make, um, I think I'm going to make an all yellow one. And <clears throat> I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just so you can see how um, it works when the paper is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to actually just cut along here so that I can see, actually that's folded. Okay, so this is, and again, you want to cut so that you have just flat pieces of paper by themselves and no folds when you first cut them. Okay, so this is going to be a bigger one. Um, and also I have one, two, I think I'm going to get one more set, actually two more sets of paper um, because, of course, the more uh, paper you have, the bigger and bolder the flower is, and that's always fun. Okay, so this is going to be a yellow flower, and this is the last example for that lay. Um, I may actually, I see that I have some orange paper here. I may try that as well. So let me move this. Okay. So now you've got this very big one. You can see, and again, I've got, this is my yellow paper, and these are individual pieces of paper. They are not together at all. So you have your sheets of paper. Uh, you have, and I've got four here. Now, I want you to, actually, I think I've got five. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Um, now, there's something to think about is you could accordion it lengthwise, okay, and that would make really big petals if you accordion it 
this way because if you think about it, you're going to put it in the middle and then pull the petals in or you can do it the way we've been doing it, which is according it when it's a little bit smaller um, and not as wide. It's yeah, less wide. So I'm actually going to be um, give this a whirl and just to show you guys what it's like. So I'm accordioning it. Try to say that three times fast. Accordioning it um, with the wide part, the long. I guess you would say length, but. Anyway, so now we've got this. It's an accordion. Again, you know, you've got your sheets of paper. We're going to cut a little bit of yarn off, and that will tie the handy dandy um, flower in the back and just kind of get the process started. Now, this one is going to be huge, so it'll be interesting as part of this lay uh, because. It's a big flower, but I wanted you to see what big flowers. And again, you just um, knot it in the back and then you start bringing the tissue paper forward one by one. And these pieces, again, are not um, cut. They're not together. They're not attached because we had five separate sheets, one on top of each other. Um, so you're going to pull it again. Now this is going to make a big old flower, big young flower, new flower. Um, but you're going to see how it's different. It's, it's a little bit prettier, I think, personally, when the flowers are smaller. But it is fun to have kind of a big flower like that. I'm going to do both sides and then show you how you can um, cut it down. You can make these rounded if you want. You can just get super creative with your flowers um, for your lace. Um, while I'm doing this, I wanted to tell you more, a little bit more about the Polynesian Islands because I am just fascinated with them um, because I've never been to them. But you can look up and, you know, see YouTube videos about the islands. This is where these lays came from. Um, but Fiji, Samoa, um, New Zealand, those are all part of the Polynesian islands. And the name Polynesian, uh, Polynesia comes from the Greek poly, which means many, in Lesos, which means islands. So that's just a little factoid. Okay, so here you go. You've got this flower. It almost looks like a rose or, you know, yellow rose of Texas. Um, if you want, I mean, it's, it's going to be a, a big... Uh, flower next to the little ones, but you know, you can, you can shape the petals if you want a little bit, you know, you can round them off, um, make them a little bit different that way. Um, you know, you can even get, you know, some sheer scissors where you, you have beveled edges of the flowers. Um, and uh, so there you go. So there is your last flower. And what we will do next, I'm going to show you how to make this lay, is you will take, you've got these kind of uh, strings of yarn hanging off. So you're going to take that and bring the flowers together. You're, what you're going to do is you're going to knot them together. Okay. And making that so you can see it. Um, so you've got the the yarn from each flower just to show you what I'm doing and then you will take your yarn in between the flowers knot it together and you can put it as close or as far as you want you are going to have um, a little bit of knot in the center so if you don't want to have that showing you might want to put them close together like this um, and then I'm going to add this one this is our pretty multicolored one and um, actually, I'm going to put it on the other side of this huge one. And we're going to knot that one together. And that will be the start of your flower, your tissue paper flower lay. Okay. And then the last thing you want to do is you will see in between each flower, of course, because they've been knotted together. Um, let me see if you can see that. So there's going to be these two strings that are hanging down and you're going to want to take those and cut them off. So that is not part of the necklace. Um, okay. So I'm cutting that off. 
And now you need to make sure, of course, that your knot stays. And so now you've got a, um, you've got the flowers together without these big strings hanging down in the middle in between the flowers. So I have re-knotted or re, you know, double checked that my knot is very secure, which it is. And I am cutting off a little piece, two little pieces. And that is the start of your construction paper lay. Now you can see that this, that flower, you might want to not use such big flowers unless you're using all of the big flowers. But this is again, the example, you know, you can, you'll keep going, you'll make, you'll have lots of beautiful flowers as it gets longer and longer. And it's really a lot of fun to make these because each one is different. And it's just kind of a fun surprise when you start pulling them out. You just don't know um, how the flower is going to end up. Okay, so the last one I'm going to make is I didn't tell you to have the supplies for this one. Um, but what you need are is a little bit of glue. And I'm hoping that you guys have that and leaves. And what this is, is these are... Um, it's going to be like a leaf uh, lay and leaf lays and fresh flower lays were, as you probably know, were very popular um, as part of lays, but leaves, they don't talk about so much. You think of the Hawaiian flowers, um, but we're going to use leaves. So I went out to my backyard and, and, you know, it's fun to get yourself outside and just kind of spend some time communing with nature too. Um, and this is actually a weed in my backyard. So I got this um, flower, I mean, this leaves, and they're big leaves are great. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. I, I have both sizes of um, leaves here. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is just add on to this one that I've already started and show you that you can also you know, there's the shiny green side of the leaf and you can cut that off or you can just snap it off, whatever works for you. And then we're going to have our trusty um, pipe cleaner again and you poke a hole in the flat, the leaf. And, um, and it's important to note that these leaves will go brown um, in a few days, you know, or in a week. You can use Mod Podge and, um, you know, save them a little bit that way. Um, now, what I'm going to do is you can see when they're this way, they have the yarn showing, you know, there's there's the shiny green part of the leaf and then there's the more dull side of the leaf. So um, anyway, you can you can choose which side you want to have out and, and you can choose whether or not you want to have that much yarn showing. Um, so, uh, again, you poke a hole in the leaf and, um, you'll then string it onto the yarn and you may need help with your handy dandy, um, pipe cleaner again. So just poke that hole and get the yarn going through it and make sure that all of the yarn goes. Sometimes it can be a little bit persnickety, um, as you're doing this. So... Um, there we go. And we get that through there. Um, and what I'm going to do is just show you kind of, uh, let's see, we're going to do it on the opposite way and, uh, just keep going. You're going to just keep poking holes in the middle or wherever you want to string the leaf. And I am actually doing the, uh, shiny side on the front and we're going to poke this through. Okay. And you'll just keep adding leaves and you can see that it, this one doesn't show the yarn as much because it's on the other side. Um, you can, you know, kind of thread it through as well. You know, you can go um, in any way that you want on the leaf. Let me just get that. And then um, it makes a really cool kind of Polynesian feeling necklace. So let me get this through there. And there you go. Um, whoops. So that one tore. Luckily, I have lots of leaves here. So we're going to do another one. And 
Okay, so you get the leaf in there. And dun da da. And that one is actually a different way than these leaves. So I'm going to make it go the same way. Um, and, you know, you might want to do it um, alternating, you know, the, the darker, maybe the front side of the leaf or the back. Um, it's up to you. So what I'm doing is I'm now going to take my leaves that I've strung on here. These have already been glued, but I'm going to glue these on now. And you can do that to cover up the yarn or not, however you want to do it. Um, you can put it close together or you can have them spread out. It, it's fine if you have a um, funky yarn color because then you can um, just kind of make that part of the design as well. So, um, and I like this kind of yellow yarn, but again, I am putting glue on the leaf. I'm going to hold it up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm putting glue on the leaf um, and then gluing the two leaves together. And that is your final uh, lay. And actually, you know, these, obviously, we can move these down a little bit just to make it all one lay together. So it looks, there you go. And I'm going to actually glue this last leaf to that. And, you know, this is a great um, lay to show you, you know, if you want to have um, the yarn showing or if you don't want to have the yarn showing, um, you know, and this is, if you look up lays, you can see a lot with beautiful leaves. So maybe you have some interesting leaves in your neighborhood and you can make a lay out of there. So there you go. So there's three different lays. We have the leaf lay. We have the um, tissue paper flower lay right here. And we have the construction paper lay right here. Uh, and what I want to want to mention too, is if you want, you can make crowns out of them. You can make bracelets out of them, you know, make them a little bit shorter. Here's another <laughs> crown. I'm an art car artist. So this is kind of fun for me. This is very Frida Kahlo-esque as well. So you can do them like that. And those are how they um, are used, how the lays are used. They're used as ankle bracelets, as um, you know, the, the necklace that you traditionally see as um, crowns, you know, regular bracelets, whatever um, people want. But it is fun to make these and it's fun to think about ways to make the flowers and, um, you know, just you can decorate the flowers and all of that. And, and think about something with each flower if you want, especially if you're making it as a present for a friend. So... There you go. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was so much fun. You're welcome. <laughs> I made my I paper lay here. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> awesome. I, had some I know. Flowers, it's, so it's it funny because some while. of the little things didn't cooperate with the yarn, but that that's part of art, right? I mean, that's just part of it. It's fun. Yeah, I had some um, tricky stuff with the paper. So it was just my my cutting, my cutting method was But that's so what's so fun is that you can, you know, you can use a um, template if you want for the flowers, mm -hmm. or you can just fold them in half and do your own. And frankly, if you want, you could even make little hearts or whatever you want. Um, lays are actually um, from many different materials and different shapes as long as it's like a pattern um that's what it is so great tips those are so fun so we have a few comments and questions here okay. so we have someone that said these will be great decor for a party which i totally agree with this yes. will be a great little craft station for kids and someone else yes. says they cannot wait to make these lace so thank Wonderful. you for inspiring us <laughs> yeah you're welcome you're welcome and it's a great rainy day activity you know um yeah. it's been raining all day and so and I, I do want to mention um i don't have um an example but if you do not have tissue paper one thing you mm -hmm. can do also is just take kleenex mm -hmm. and color it with marker make sure you have something underneath mm -hmm. it and then you can, you know, do the, basically the tissue paper flower, um, but using 
literally. Wow, tissue. DIY tissue paper. Yeah. If you don't have, um, you know, this kind of tissue paper, there's all kinds of ways you can do that. So. Yeah, we have a couple more questions. So someone wants to know, okay. do you think you can upcycle some gift tissue paper to create the <gasps> Absolutely. lace? Absolutely. That is my kind of person. Yeah, actually, you know, <laughs> my husband got, um, thank you for asking that. They must know me, whoever that is, because <laughs> I'm, <a, laughs> I'm a repurposed girl and just love to repurposing. My husband got some new tennis shoes and they actually were wrapped in tissue paper. You know how tissue paper yeah. comes with shoes. And, um, you know, I put it in the closet, of course, you know, the, the art closet. And yeah, absolutely. Anything. I mean, the, the important thing with the um, these kind of tissue paper flowers is that you do need something thin enough so that you can, um, you know, separate them. I mean, if you have, you know, cardstock, that's not going to work. But yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Gift bags. That's perfect. Thank you. Fun. for that. So you had, I really liked your leaves um, lay. That was probably my favorite. That's really cool. So you yeah. mentioned Mod Podge. So the Mod Podge, if you paint it on and wait for it to dry, it will keep the leaves green? It will keep them green for a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing's perfect because this is nature. And right now it's alive and then it will die, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but the Mod Podge does help. Yeah, it definitely helps. Cool. So. You also mentioned some grass skirts in the beginning. You talked about, you know, lays and grass skirts. Have you ever DIYed a grass skirt? I have not, but it would be really easy to do. It would take a lot longer. Um, actually, you know, in my backyard, I have that big um, elephant ear type yeah. um, material. And it's really, if you just take this and stretch it out and put elephant ear on it, you know, mm -hmm. longer then you can put it around your waist and it's, it'll work. Yeah. So any of that, I mean, nature, the way I look at it is nature is our, you know, our playground and it's a place to go to, you know, find serenity and peace and all of that and be safe with uh, COVID during this time period. But also nature just, you know, offers us lots of creativity and inspiration, you know, and um, Absolutely. in the Polynesian islands, when the Polynesians came to Hawaii, they were very into, as I said at the beginning, into flowers. And so that's why they started making lays out of flowers. You can also, let's say this is a real flower, you can use um, needles and thread. You can thread it through or even with this kind of paper. Um, but I was trying to use as few, um, unusual items as possible. So needle and thread you may have, but you may not. So um, there's all kinds of ways to do that. Yeah, definitely. You made it really accessible for us. So yeah. one of the last things I want to ask you, so one of the things you said several times, which I love, you said that art was an adventure. Yes. Do you think you can tell us one about, about one of your favorite art adventures? Because it sounds like you've had a bunch. <laughs> I, have an art car. I have an art car. So I, I've actually made four art cars. So um, every day is an adventure. And I will tell you that, gosh, I mean, I've had so many art adventures. I mean, I think the most important thing, and I will tell you an adventure, but the most important thing about art is to, you know, and I don't know if people out there that are watching this or, you know, watch it later, but you sometimes you have something in your mind that you want your art to look like. And then as you're making it, and you may have experienced this, <laughs> yes. way, it looks like something else. And you think, oh, that didn't turn out right. But that's just, you know, it's just like life. So, um, but I would say my adventures with art, my car is a canvas on wheels. And so the adventure happens when I pull up to a gas station and get gas and talk to people. Or, you know, when I'm, you know, in the you know, stoplight next to somebody, they look and they wave. Um, but I do think for me, art is communication. You know, I'm an artist, um, of course, and it's a way of communicating. And if somebody said, this is a good party, you know, costume, but it's, it's communicating what you, it's you. And, you know, it's art from the heart, right? So <laughs> yes. to me, that's such an important concept because it's, it's coming from us and it's our expression and humans need expression. I mean, they, we've been expressing ourselves since, you know, caveman, cave women times. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's just fun. And, it, and it's also, um, you know, when kids are in school or even in the summertime, it's great to take a break and to do something that's kind of meditative. And that's why I was saying, you know, it's a good idea to um, play music and especially, you know, with this Asian American Pacific Islander, Heritage Month, 
um, to play music from the Pacific Islands, you know, why not? And just kind of add to your experience and, and really um, think about being over there where these lays originated from. So yeah, that's fine. I love your um, your description of the Polynesian culture. I really hope you get to visit one day. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> <Which one? laughs> well, is- thank you so much, um, Sarah, for joining us today. Um, we're you. so glad that you came to teach us how to make glaze and to share your love of art with us. Um, it was really insightful. Thank you, thank and you. also thank you again to young audiences for letting us borrow Sarah for the night. <laughs> yes, this is a perfect project for families to do. To together with summer get-togethers coming up. And for those of you watching today at home, maybe you missed some of the instructions, but don't worry, you can come right back on here to Facebook to watch the archive video in our video section. So it's almost the end of the month, but we still have so much fun in store for your family here at the Harris County Public Library. We hope you'll join us here next Wednesday, May 26th for our 1960s celebration that is sure to get you moving with a live Motown and More concert featuring the SVK band. So you can join us here next Wednesday at seven o'clock to join in on the fun. And don't forget to check out our other virtual programs that we have going on throughout the week. So to all of our families at home today, thank you again so much for joining us. We all hope you have a wonderful evening. All right. Have a nice night. Goodbye.